Hello everybody. My name is James Geiger. I'm a medical doctor, a board certified anesthesiologist for 35 years almost. It seems hard to believe 35 years of doing this, especially since it's only been the last 14 or 15 years that I figured out how to use uh, something natural in a really uh, advanced clinical practice such as anesthesiology. I use aromatherapy, essential oils in the operating room. It's made my practice a whole lot more fun for me and a whole lot more beneficial to my patients because they uh, tend not to be nauseated afterwards and have a whole less, much less anxiety beforehand. It's pretty wonderful. I'm also a clinically certified aromatherapy practitioner and a wellness advocate. I promote wellness. That's my message in life, promoting wellness through nature. And um, a lot of people like to promote wellness when they talk about a pyramid where you have the basics. You know, remember how there was a food pyramid that the FDA used to promote about how you had to have the, you know, the basic five vegetables and fruits and, you know, calcium things. And well, the wellness pyramid actually is like, you know, the basics of all the way up from, you know, exercise all the way up through mental health with food kind of, you know, being, uh, you know, taken taken to be understood that you have a good diet. I'm kind of on a modified uh, keto diet right now, pseudo modified keto, and it's uh, really worked well for me. But when I add oils like these whole natural plant solutions, I think it's fabulous to consider that these whole, whole oils from plants uh, really are very beneficial to our health and are, should be part of that wellness pyramid. So I'm going to talk about the how and the why I use essential oils as I go through this presentation and in terms of the aromatic sciences. So essential oils, when they first started being promoted, they had monographs and they described the, the natural history of oils, the traditional uses of oils, how they're grown, where they're grown, what kind of climate they like, what kind of soil they like, uh, how they're manufactured, what's their flash point, boiling point, you know, a lot of the basics. Nowadays, though, it's gotten a whole lot more complicated because of the adulteration of oils that's going on in the industry globally. And that's a real problem. And that's where doTERRA comes to the forefront as to our safety and the efficacy of using oils. They have a, a, a trademarked, a, a brand exclusive called Certified Pure Therapeutic Grade Essential Oils, CPTG. It's a two-part concept. They're certified to be pure, and they certify them through numerous laboratory testings. And they're therapeutic grade because of the way that they are actually sourced, where they're grown, how they're grown, how they're manufactured, how they're actually presented to us in formats, whether it's roller balls or 15 ml bottles or in whole products where you actually get the, the plant extracts in a capsule with oils as well. Vitamins with oils is a very and vitamins with essential oils is a very unique concept in this day and time. doTERRA has that. They also have uh, independent third-party documentation. Uh, doTERRA orders are uh, unique in that you can, on single oils, you can actually look up your batch and see the actual mass spectrometry and gas chromatography for that batch of oils that you just received as your personal order. Very unique concept in this day and time to offer that because before they were kind of, you know, nobody knew how to read them. Nobody knew what they were. They just knew they were important. Well, now you can have your very own oils uh, documented for you that way. Very special. Uh, therapeutic potency is also very important to know that, you know, some oils are better grown at altitude. Some are better grown at sea level. They produce better volumes, better percentage volumes of chemical constituents in the oils based upon the type of plant, the season of the plant, how it's actually, when it's actually harvested, and how it's harvested, how it's distilled. Temperature and pressure and distillation, steam distillation with water makes a lot of difference uh, as to how the actual end product will end up uh, on your shelf. The other thing is that uh, there are different ways about how these oils can be used. Aromatically through inhalation, cupped hands, cotton balls, misters, diffusers, uh, topically, you know, diluted, not diluted, applied to the skin as a massage technique. There are all kinds of fantastic clinical articles about the use of uh, oils 
in the hospital using those two techniques, aromatic and topical. There's, all, there's a very little to none in terms of the clinical uh, applications of oils documented in the literature for ingestion, but there's lots of safety in that regard, though that's been shown in terms of the uh, organ function as far as metabolism and the safety of it. I just got finished getting an article published on the anesthesia implications of the use of essential oils in Alzheimer's dementia patients because there are very specific uh, indications and contraindications uh, and benefits of using the oils for all the different things that dementia patients and Alzheimer's patients encounter as they age and move through those end decades of their life. So essential oils in, uh, in uh, every age and every home is what uh, the way I look at it. The, that this, this Courier and Ives picture shows uh, from you know, birth to you know, the very aged in the, uh, in, the hundred, in the ninth decade going on 100 years old. There are different things that are very selective for those age groups and what their needs are, whether it's uh, perimenopause for females as shown here. There is a men's um, uh, Courier and Ives poster that's very much the same. And, and men go through a climatric as well, and oils can be very apropos for uh, men with uh, you know, mood problems. My wife and I like to go hiking. Uh, we hike a lot. And how do you use oils when you're hiking, uh, you know, especially in the desert? I mean, it's not like you can actually diffuse oils in, while you're hiking. That's rather tough. So what we tend to do is, you know, use oils that are in lozenges. We like these breathe lozenges that has raven cera and eucalyptus oils in them. And they are very refreshing when you're hiking, uh, very refreshing, because that's a form of ingestion of oils and inhalation as well because they're, they're vaporizing in your mouth as you suck on these lozenges and get that little bit of sugar boost from the cane sugar. It's uh, organic and awesome. I love it. So, but this is what, you see, what, what you'd see me doing. If my head was on top of that picture, that could be me with the purple gloves on with a mask on somebody's face. I mean, I did that a couple times today already before I did this for you all right now. And I'm an anesthesiologist and aromatherapist, clinically certified, and I'm a label reader. And you better believe it, as an anesthesiologist, you need to be a label reader. Every single vial, you better know what it is that you're drawing up into that syringe and giving into that intravenous line, that it's accurate, that you know what you're doing, and that it's pure. And that's the confidence that I have when I take something out of the lockbox in the Pixis, that it's been certified, that it's therapeutic and ready to go. And the same thing is true of doTERRA's oil products, which I think is fabulous. You need to be an oil reader of their labels as well. They put a lot of information on these labels. They tell you that w where the plant, um, what part of the plant they're using, whether it's eucalyptus leaf or um, the uh, neroli fruit, you know, the, so you can actually read that. And on some of the bottles, you know, it actually has the supplements facts on it to show that it can be taken internally. That's not true of the blends. The blends don't are many of them use oils which are not generally regarded as safe for internal use. And that's the, the caveat about the use of oils for ingestion. So be a label reader. Read, read your labels and become familiar with what's in them, where it came from, what kind of plant it is, what part of the plant's being used, and whether it's got supplement facts on it for internal ingestion. One of the ways that I use the oils is, uh, in the operating room is the ginger. And this is like getting ginger candy. Um, my mother used to love to chew on ginger candy to calm her guts, but I use it on the palms, <gasps> inhalation technique. They tell them to put it on their ears, share it with their loved ones before they go in the operating room. Sometimes I do it lavender for the loved ones before we go in as an inhalation and topical absorption technique. Your palm or arch is very rich in circulation. Great way to absorb oils from your palms. I published this article back in 05, the, the essential oil of ginger, zingiber, officinale, and anesthesia. There have been numerous articles in the past about the use of, of ginger, dried ginger in capsules for treatment of um, and prevention of nausea uh, during laparoscopic surgery for uh, OBGYN work. And the, the results were kind of compared to other intravenous medications and it was very equivocal. Some were good, some were bad studies. 
some were done well and still didn't produce positive results. So I decided to be, do the first one on ginger oil and use it on my patients and figured out whether this was really valid and worth doing or not. Because when I first got into this, I was trying to figure out how do oils apply to me and my career and my patients. And I found that ginger oil in this application for topical and inhalation is fabulous, fabulous stuff. So the basic science of this is that as you're inhaling the vapors, whether it's through the mouth or the nose, the nerves from the brain stem innervate all that hypopharynx area, the tongue, the epiglottis, the back of the throat, the pharynx, and they directly go back to the solitary nucleus, which are um, sites of uh, nausea receptors, which is very, very fascinating to me. So you can have pretty much a direct contact with just a few synapses to very important parts of the brainstem. Now this is a kind of a reverse concept. Most people, when they show a picture of the lungs, they show a picture of the actual where the air goes. This is a picture of where the blood goes in the lungs. These are the blood vessels from the heart to the lungs. So you realize that when you're inhaling these vapors of oils, whether it's from a diffuser in a room you walk into or whatever scent, that they're actually getting transferred across the basement membranes of the lungs into the vasculature of the, of the body much the same way that oxygen is exchanged and carbon dioxide is exchanged through that tissue of the lungs via the vasculature of the lungs. So you're getting a, a inhalation dose into your vascular system as you're breathing in essential oils. To me, that's just a fascinating concept. One of the, one of the benefits of eucalyptus is that it has eucalyptol in it. 1,8-cinolol is actually the chemical constituent name for it. Very, very powerful in terms of respiratory benefits, this eucalyptol. When my wife and I went on vacation uh, a week ago, we were in these, one of these steam saunas, and I took my bottle of eucalyptus in there, which I had remembered from you know, the Swedes and when they get into their saunas, how they use eucalyptus leaves and all this other stuff to try and get that scent for the health benefits. So I used several drops of eucalyptus oil while I was in there, and I was inhaling the vapors, and I could really tell a difference of of how energizing it was, how clearing it was. Great technique. So there are very many properties of essential oils. I've listed just a few that fascinate me recently. Um, it's, it's been in the food chain. I mean, it's been used in, by, by food companies in pr food products all your life already, but in very low doses, 30 parts per million. But when you look at a drop of oil from a bottle that's concentrated, 100% oil, it's about 60 milligrams per drop, and, but that drop size depends on how thick it is based on how, what the temperature is in the room and where it's being used. But the beautiful thing about it is this is almost zero glycemic index. In other words, it doesn't raise your blood sugar, so there's no calories involved. Now, three calories per gram, I mean, there's not too many things that have next to nothing in them in terms of calories, but that's essential oils. There's no proteins in them. It's hydrocarbons. It's chemicals. It's chemistry but natural plant chemistry to your benefit and your health. They have extremely high ORAC values, oxygen radical absorbance capacity. Think anti-aging when you think about ORAC. Oils have this great ability to find these free electrons and scavenge them up and prevent them from doing damage to your cells. It's a beautiful concept. They also decrease stress hormones. They found that using oils um, decreases the amount of cortisol in your saliva, which is one of the indicators they use for stress. They're also, they also hit like hundreds of receptors in the body. I just mentioned kappa beta and GABA 1 and 2. Those are the common ones related to inflammation and anxiety. They also operate as calcium channel blockers, which is a fascinating concept from a doctor's viewpoint because that's a way of... Uh, calming and working in, in muscles and vasculature. They also improve uh, glucose metabolism and improve sen sensitivity to insulin. They, the article that I mentioned that I wrote has to do with anticholinesterase activity. They're anticholinase inhibitors. One of the first line drugs for uh, people with memory loss and early onset Alzheimer's and dementia is an anticholinesterase inhibitor which is what oil have that, oils have that property too. It's a fascinating concept to me that, that something that can be used to improve your memory could be an oil. 
They also have influence on DNA and its uh, ability to be transcribed and translated in the various pathways in the body. And it also, recent research by doTERRA has shown that it enhances certain gene expression and suppression and synthesis, which yields synthesis of proteins and immunoglobulins and very specific biomarkers. So evidence-based phytotherapeutic literature, if you go to this aromaticscience.com website, you can see literally hundreds of articles related to uh, aromatherapy and essential oils and the chemical constituents and the laboratory studies globally from around the world. Many different countries are deeply involved in research on oils now. And the research is much better than it was in the last century. So this whole idea of epigenetics and DNA, it's really coming to the forefront in many ways with this idea of crisp, CRISPR and gene manipulation and making new beings. But one thing that's fascinating is that uh, oils work in the cell in much the same to reach the DNA and the products that DNA and RNA code for. This imagine is a G protein at the cell surface, an odorant comes and lands on it, causes a cascade of a reaction in and through the nuclear pores in the, inside the nucleus of the cell, reaching the DNA, the double helix here, and where the ribosomes and messenger RNA work to make products or to prevent the making of products, which is equally significant. So this was the article done by the doTERRA where they actually said an essential oil blend modulates important infl inflammation and immune response related biomarkers in human cell cultures. Landmark article just published last year. Human cell cultures, so they actually did human tissue where they put the oils on them to see what it did. And the results are fascinating. I wrote on these because I was trying to figure out what's what and where it's going, what's up, what's good up, what's good, bad down. And uh, it's really interesting that it influences collagen, keratin. These are basic building blocks for skin, hair, nails, and tendons and cartilage, and numerous other things, the vasculature and just so many, so many different things they studied. It's fascinating. But to think that you can get oils in your vitamins is, is uh, really a unique concept in this day and time. And I'm not talking about fish oils. I'm talking about oils from plants, uh, plant oils. And again, you know, label reading, take as directed, you know. And a lot of people ask me, well, how do you use the oils? Well, the bottle says right on it. I say take as directed. Read the bottle. Learn how to use the oils. This one is really remarkable. It helped me a tremendous amount when I was um, after a car wreck, when I had a lot of uh, you know muscle trauma from being in a car wreck, shooken up. And this is uh, the extracts of plants in capsules, deep blue. But it also comes with the oils in a, in a lotion, so that you can rub on this lotion with the oils. So you get both aspects of it, the whole plant by using the capsules of the extracts and the oil from the plant in a lotion. And the oils are these cooling menthols, a little bit of salicylates from wintergreen, methyl, salic methyl salicylates, aspirin, camphor, well-known traditional uses for things like this. This is a new oil that's been promoted, a dietary supplement with beta carophylline that chemical constituent affects all the major systems of the body. Fascinating. Copaiba. It's, it's a resin from a, a Brazilian tree. Really tremendous, tremendous. And this is the article which we can barely make out, but it talks about polypharmacological properties and therapeutic potential of beta carophylline a dietary phytocannabinoid of pharmaceutical promise. This article covers a total body review of systems, everything from your brain to your toenails, and how the oil and the, and the cons major constituent of it, of which black pepper is also really rich in beta carophylline, how it works to help with that wonderful wellness and well-being aspect of all your bodily systems. And here's a, a thing about body care, beta carophylline, and these are all the different systems. That it, that it affects. 
So what makes all this possible now and in the future? I mean, if so many people are getting really interested in oils and, and so many people are consuming the oils, are there enough oils for everybody? And doTERRA has made this program called Co-Impact Sourcing. And they found a way to go into indigent cultures, cultures that uh, don't have uh, a lot of the things that America has and other uh, developed nations and help to bring them a, a way of having a product that they can market on a continual basis. And they bring in the, the necessary things that cultures need to grow and develop and survive and raise their kids, like schools, clinics, hospitals, wells for clean water. And they then work with them to figure out how to grow the plants the best, when's the best time to harvest, help them bring them to the distillery and actually have a product that they can then have marketed and have be on a salary so that they can have their family fed and educated for the future and that we can have oils for the future. Co-Impact Sourcing is a super amazing program and I'd like to thank doTERRA and all of their executives, especially Emily Wright and her leadership, to bring this to pass in this day and time so that oils can be made available continually for our future and for our future health and our kids and grandkids. So thanks for listening. You're the best. I've really enjoyed sharing this with you today.